is good to be back in the house of the Lord for Bible study. Amen. Um, I'm excited about what God's been doing and uh, excited about uh, the service that we had Sunday and what we continue to have. It seems every single service God has came here and showed out and, and just blessed us. And, and honestly, you know, I will say this. I know here lately, uh, adults, you, uh, you, you're proud of your young people, am I, because uh, our young people have been doing a phenomenal job in uh, worship and getting a hold of God and, and being in prayer and supporting whoever is ministering, whoever is singing, and uh, let me tell you, that is important in the service, yeah. amen, uh, because of that. Uh, that ushers in the presence of God, not only as the worship singers are singing, that in itself uh, begins to draw uh, and gets us encouraged and get our minds set on the presence of God. And then uh, when we respond to that, it does something in the service that causes us to also want to respond. Think about it. Now, I'm going to be carnal for a second, but if you have one person you know, start clapping their hands or doing something, what happens? Try it. Try it. See what happens. That's what I'm talking about. It, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a natural reaction. You know, there's a response. I mean, I don't know what it is about us, but we just don't want somebody clapping by themselves, you know, uh, except we're in the church sometimes. The so clap. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I commend our young people for starting down there, bringing it here, and also our adults that are right there with them. And uh, I believe that's also essential to what God's been doing. Yes. Amen. And um, so uh, just uh, very thankful for, for all these wonderful services. And I'm thankful because... Uh, when the people of God get in one mind and one accord, that is how we end up having a dynamic move of God. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, we're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer and ask that you, uh, if you have any need, uh, just represent that need by lifting your hand. God knows exactly what's going on in our Bible study, but I know that God has got something great for us. Amen? And I've uh, been really, truly enjoying uh, the different lessons and many to come. Uh, from that. Amen. So let's all, yes. Okay. 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 We definitely need to pray for her. Um, need to pray for uh, Brother Tony Moore. He, he texted me to let me know that he wasn't feeling good today. Uh, so Lord willing, he'll be here Sunday, but uh, we want to pray for him. Um, Sister Larissa and, and her, her uh, pregnancy as well. We want to continue to remember them. Anybody else? Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Ask God to just minister and use me tonight or to, get to teach this word. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Jesus. We thank you so much. We ask that you administer, touch your people tonight. Lord, as we get ready to dive in and study your word, Yet again, that God, this will be just another lesson that will allow us to, to attempt to be more Christ-like, more authentic, more like you want us to be. Lord, order our steps, lead us and guide us and direct our paths as we study this word. Lord, I pray for all the needs, all those that are sick, uh, those that are sick in body uh, with pregnancies and, 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 and complications, Lord, uh, those that are weak. And God, I pray that you would continue to minister, Lord and touch their needs until we can all come together once again. We love you, and we thank you. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. All right. How many of y'all been enjoying Authentic? Yeah. Amen. Um, and I, I've really, truly enjoyed it. And I've really, again, not only during the uh, normal services, uh, but even in Bible study, the response of the church wanting and having a desire to be more authentic. 
authentic Christians. It's not just something we say or something that we proclaim without it being uh, for, uh, in the front of our minds. But the idea that everywhere I go, when people see me, they need to see Christ in me. Everywhere that I go and whoever I talk to, they've got to see Christ in me. Now, we have talked about uh, some several lessons so far about our testimony, uh, while Scripture is important, uh, prayer and fasting, and all of these things come uh, in a uh, specific way. Wanted, and I feel now, and the Lord has been more uh, revealing to me of why uh, he chose for us to go the direction of prayer and fasting last week is because he knew that he wanted me to go this direction this week. And is it about prayer? Not today. Um, that's coming. I got a good lesson that I, I, want, I can't wait to teach on prayer, uh, but that's just that's something. Is it, is it tithe and offering? No, that's not it either, even though I know we've got to pray and fast before we start preaching about that and teaching about that. Amen. Now, today, what I want to talk about is something that is very difficult for today. Amen. And in order for us to truly be authentic Christians, we have to follow the Scripture as it is written even the parts that don't necessarily make us feel good. Right. Now, what could I possibly be talking about? And, and, and to some of you, this is going to be a no-brainer. Some, some, for some, this is, hey, this, that's right. This is how it's supposed to be. And for some, it's like, that it's not, I know it's right, but I don't want it. Because every one of us was created in the image of who? Right. And what is God? He's a lot of things. That's right. But one of the things he is, he's a creator. He's a wise God. He's an all-knowing God. He has a plan. He has all of those things. He sits on a throne. He is righteous. He is holy. And because we are created in his image, guess what? We inherit some of those attributes. Right? But with those attributes, God established, but there's still only just one, and that's me. Amen? Amen. Right? So, um, I'm going to make you creative. I'm going to make you be able to have good plans. I'm going to make you be able to make decisions. And some of you, I'm going to make a leader, and some of you, I'm going to make a, a supporter, and et cetera, et cetera. But, but don't forget that ultimately there's only one throne and there's only one that sits on that throne and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So the order of God and His uh, plan of leadership is He's established leadership. Amen? As um, far as the leaders in the church, uh, next month we have something planned that I cannot wait. I mean, Brother Brady actually kind of helped me uh, further this uh, by sharing some things that you learned in leadership uh, last week at work. Um, where we can become better leaders. There's nothing wrong with desiring to be better. However, we always still got to remember where our connection comes from. Now, with every situation and every people that God had, Somebody had to be the leader. Amen? Um, there's never a time in Scripture where that you find that where God did not establish something and then put somebody as a leader. Somebody has to lead. That is God's earthly leadership that He's created. Ultimately, God is the creator of all. The leader of all, if you will. The king of kings and all of that. Jeremiah sends out this warning to pastors and leaders. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. That's a pretty straight and forward commandment. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. It's an ultimate responsibility for pastors and leaders of the church to follow after what God commands. Being a pastor does not make me a dictator. If I try to use the authority that God has called me to, one, number one, I didn't ask for it. Amen? Brother Bray, you didn't ask to be an assistant pastor. And uh, ministers in the church didn't ask to be called to the ministry. So therefore, since we ain't been called to it, Sister Danielle, um, we can't really have room to complain either. Now, let me be transparent. Let me be authentic. Have I complained to God? Absolutely. And then he reminds me very often that, look, 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 dude, this is kind of how God talks to me. He may talk to y'all differently, like father, my son, my precious son. He don't talk to me that way. He's like, look, dude, I didn't call you. For you to fail. So when you get frustrated, don't you forget, you're not the one who asked for this. I told you, I commanded you, I've given you this role. Sometimes we would recognize that it's not us. And it took me a while to realize, even uh, from being in leadership before I became a pastor, is the fact is, is, I didn't ask for it, God put me there. And just like somebody on the job or anywhere that you go, um, you have folks that have been put over us, and we, whether we really agree or anything, we still have to follow it or we lose our job, right? Now, when it comes to pastoring and leadership and ministry, we have to follow those that are over us or we can lose our lives if we're not following after what God's established. Now, that takes a lot of trust. That takes a lot of trust that sometimes it's hard to have. Because unfortunately, just like Jeremiah said, look, I've called some pastors, but you did not perform like I called you to. Matter of fact, you caused more destruction than you've caused help. Sometimes we have taken the role of pastor and say that, man, I can use this position to make people do what I think is best for them. Rather than, I'm going to teach them how to choose to do the right thing that's best for them. Amen? Anybody want to elaborate? Does that make sense? Because the fact is, is I can say, don't do that and you can't. And if you do it, I'm going to hold you hostage. Or I'm going to condemn you. Or I'm going to hold you back. Or I'm going to do whatever I can do to twist your arm, make you feel guilty until you do it my way and then it makes me feel better. Amen? Amen. Am I making sense? Yeah. Or I can say, Brian, listen, I'm going to teach you the way. I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to show you through Scripture. And I'm going to show you not only through Scripture, but through my actions as a, as a leader that God has set that not only do you desire to know what to do is right, but you have a desire on your own to do what's right. See, the fact is, is every single one of us needs somebody in our life to lead us. Amen? I'm a pastor of this assembly, so I lead this assembly. But I have two foes that I have to go to. I have one God. God is the one that I report to. He's the boss. He's the one who gives me the message. He's the one who says that this is the direction we go. He's the one who gives me the discernment uh, for the church and the vision set for the church. But also, I have an earthly leader that when I need some counsel 
I'm not trying to figure this thing out by myself, and I'm not trying to also figure it out with peers. Because sometimes I don't need peer counseling. I need somebody that is has authority over me to help me and tell me the truth. Amen? I need a preacher that will preach to me the unadulterated word of God. Honestly. And not with bias. I need a preacher that will tell me the truth. Even when I don't want to hear it. The hardest part, or the, I think the hardest part and the, and the hardest, if you please, responsibility of being a, a member of, a, of an assembly or a member of a church is having enough trust in the person that's sending the message that we need to trust to follow that. That that person, whoever is leading the, or, or preaching or ministering, that they are under the anointing of God and what they're teaching or preaching to us is exactly what God is wanting us to do. And I can understand how that can be difficult. Because honestly, we can look around today and I can look back over my life, and you can look back over your life, and many of us unfortunately have testimonies of coming out of situations where the, there were Jeremiah pastors that did not do anything but sow discord and dictatorship and affliction and, and emotional scars because they did not do it the way God said for it to be done. You cannot pastor... Or be a leader if you don't have compassion. How on earth, how on earth can I take somebody and talk to them and, 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 and even be able to love them enough to tell them the truth, even if I know it's going to hurt them, but know enough that if I don't, what the consequences of the direction they're going is going to hurt them even more. See, today... It's easier to have a pastor to tell you what you want. Tell me what I'm doing is fine. Tell me what I'm doing is okay. Tell me what I'm doing is right. And don't tell me what I shouldn't do. Well, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to instruct you on what God says. Amen? Now, if you want to hear what you want to hear, call a friend. Or we can call acquaintances. If you want somebody to just tell you Brooklyn whatever you want to hear, then call somebody that will do that for you. But if you want to know the truth and what is good to keep you saved, to keep you in the fight, to keep you pressing, call me. Call one of the ministers. Call somebody in the ministry. Because the fact is that they're true ministers of God. They're going to tell you the truth and not what you want to hear. Now, I can understand as friends, you know, hey, man, man, does this, this, this shirt look good? Oh, yeah, bro. Right? Do you know? We, we, you know, and then as soon as they go, man, <laughs> dude, did you see Danielle's shirt? Bree, don't you ever wear anything like that. But then you're like, hey, Pastor, how you doing? You like my shirt? Oh, girl, praise the Lord, sister. It's a shirt. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. But then again, we don't want to be the ones like, dude, that's hideous. Don't you ever. Matter of fact, get out, oh, get out of my face. Man, I didn't want to hear that. That's why husbands don't answer the questions. Does this look good? Don't just avoid it. But if they put you in the corner, like I know they do, just take your best guess. That's all I can tell you. Take the best guess. <laughs> think what you think they want to hear, right? You know, 
Because honestly, when my wife asked me if this works with this, I can honestly tell you both of them work for me, so I'm not lying. I just pick one. Don't. Uh, uh. I can't, she's sitting right here. I'm under the Holy Ghost, babe. But when it comes to somebody's life, somebody's soul, somebody's purpose, we don't have the time to sit back and say, well, that's okay. No, we got to be honest. Because Jesus was honest. We talk about how great He was. and he, God manifests in the flesh. He was the walking Word. He was the living Word. He was the way, the truth, the life, still is and was and is to come. He is all of that. And He was still able to say, love your neighbor, but you are vipers over there because you're not following the law. Before we can continue with any more lessons, as being authentic. We had to first get over a lot of stuff. First we had to realize we overcome our testimony. We had to realize we had to get over certain things that, that's within ourselves. Then we talk about our fasting. We got to get this out of the way. And once we can get ourselves out of the way and our own ideologies out of the way, then we can also start thinking about now. From this point forward, I need to follow after the vein of God. And how do I do that? We have to learn how to trust in the leadership and the teaching of it. Because if you can't do that, how can you take correction? Amen? Now, I find in Scripture, see, we, we gloss over a lot of Scriptures that has to deal with this stuff today. Used to, back in the 90s, I mean, that was, our, that was the strong point of some, some pastors. That's how they got people to do what they wanted. Now we gloss over it. We don't want to talk about it no more because now we've got folks that are so um, arrogant in their way. They don't have to listen to anybody. they got their own ideas. they got their own plans. They don't need direction. But Scripture's still the same. It's just how you present it. Obedience is the foundation of a Christian life. James 1 and 22 says, this is the New Living Translation, and remember, in, remember it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. If you don't obey, you're only fooling yourself. For if you just listen and don't obey, it's like looking at your face in the mirror but doing nothing to improve your appearance. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you keep looking steadily into God's perfect law, the law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Romans 13 and 1 says, Let every soul be subject to the authorities that are above him, for there... Is no authority except from God. From God. We cannot allow, we have to understand that being in leadership, and being in the line of authority that's been given to God, it is something that has been given, not taken. When something is taken, that's where you get people that abused become bullies in the pulpit. Amen? Am I making sense? But however, we have to remember that when you are standing or sitting in this office of position that God has called you to, there's a great responsibility. You cannot put your own self into it. First Peter also reminds us to be subject to every ordinance of man for the, law, for the Lord's sake, whether to kings as supreme or unto governors as sent by him for vengeance on evildoers and for praise of them that do well. Now, we don't have a problem disobeying the law. But we always have a problem when it's 
come into God's law. Well, I need some more. I need some more information on that. I need to. I need some more proof. Sometimes Paul had to speak on the condition of what's going on. Today it's in our Bible, but at that point it was just a letter. At that point, it was, a, it was a letter of instruction. One of the greatest books that I have uh, ever read on spiritual authority has helped me um, when I was not a pastor, when I had to submit to someone myself. And again, like I said, today I still have to submit to God and submit to those that are over me. I've got, a, I've got two pastors that I go to that I submit to and I talk to. So every one of us has something in common is that we have to have somebody. Okay? So Watchman Nee stated in his book, Spiritual Authority. I had, to, I had to read this when I was in Bible college, and I'm glad I did because it really helped me understand how this works. He says, quote, Nowadays, people often ask, why should I obey? Since both you and I are brothers, why well, must I obey you? But men are not qualified to ask in this manner. The Lord alone qualified. Yet he has never said such words, nor has such a thought ever entered in his mind. Christ represents obedience, which is a perfect as the authority of God is perfect. May God be merciful to those who claim they know authority when obedience is yet missing in their lives. So what is he saying in this? There is a scripture that we could all quote today that talks about Christ, God in the flesh, submitting and being obedient. God was obedient. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Think about that. God did not have to subject himself to the law. God did not have to subject, subject himself into becoming the created. He did not have to subject himself into becoming flesh, but he did not use his deity because he was fully God and fully man. But when he walked as man, he did not use his, de his deity to trump his flesh. Right. Now think about that. He was subject to the law. He was subject to the law of man. He was subject to being flesh. He was subject to hurt. He was subject to pain. He did not, y'all, do you understand? He didn't have to. Who are you, any of you? Is any of you going to stand up against God if he said, you know what, I ain't doing this no more? You can't because he's God. He can't. He humbled himself and become obedient first. Obedient to death. Even the death of the cross. Matter of fact, while he was even on earth and they said, hey, all right, Jesus, who do we render to? He said, give me a coin. Who's on it? Come on, Jesus, you know who that is. That's Caesar. Well, you give Caesar Caesar's, you give God as God. In other words, he was saying, listen, just as much as you obey the laws of man, you must be obedient to God. But you can't, you can't just say, because you're the church, you can't be obedient to the law. So the question of the day was back in March and April is, Pastor, what do we do when the law says we can't have the church open? I am not going to sit here and talk against folks that said they're going to fight against the, the, the man or, or the, the government or whoever. Because my scripture tells me that we must also be obedient. Not just, it's, obedience is not just in the church, but it's also in the law. Amen? So if Jesus Christ being our greatest example and who we want to be Christ-like and be authentic to, to, to what Christ is, then we must also... Be obedient in everything that we do. That means in the church and in the law. Amen? Yes. Now, another thing that we need to look at is that God has established delegated 
authority. Listen, anybody that's in ministry or in leadership, um, I know what we do. And I remember as a kid uh, going to camp and all that stuff, you know, and I'd look at these ministers and I esteem them high and think, man, they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and all this stuff. Listen, here's the fact. They're just on borrowed authority. Borrowed. It's been delegated. In other words, that, hey, God has delegated that until that time is up, until it is time for someone else to fill that role. Because not every, the authority that leaders have isn't their own. The moment that we think that it's us, it's we, men, man. By, the, by my authority, you will do this. No, that, it's not yours. Amen. God is the source of all authority in the universe. Amen. And now since all governing authorities are instituted by Him, then all authorities are delegated by Him and represents His authority. Does that mean that people cannot do what's wrong? Absolutely. That's why we find ourselves in this catch-22 of where that we have to learn and discern and figure out and be exactly where God calls us to be. Yep. I had a, a sister in the first church we had been in for about five, four, five years. Uh, Follow Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. so I, I love the, his leadership. I thought leadership would be the best way to lead me, but I was not about me, but God. Right. Yeah. Right? And so that's yeah, and that's and thank you so much for that because that's the that's the case of per to be authentic Christians. The reason why I said that you got to have this to be an authentic Christian is because just like you said, Sister Bray, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? They got to hear from somebody. Jesus said this, you know, the the uh, the, the 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 way is broad to hell and destruction. You know what that means? You know what he's talking about? And, and if you look at the Greek, and, and I studied this out, I didn't put it in here, but just, just food for thought. You know what he's talking about? He said, take those that have no rules, no leadership, no authority in their life, and watch them. They're so-called, quote-unquote, free to live independently, and they're all heading to their own destruction. Because... The Israelites would have found themselves destroyed if they didn't have a Moses to lead them out of bondage. No, you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on now. Look, look at this now. Let's jump on that. Let's jump on that for a second. Watch this. Just, just like Eli was not the perfect man of God. We can all agree with that. We can all agree with that. His sons was wicked. His sons was really, a, they remind me of a lot of pastors today. Let's be honest. What can I gain out of being a prophet? Well, nothing's new under the sun. It happened then too. And Eli overlooked that. So God's not, listen, if you let God, man, I, I got a thousand things going through my head right now. I got to pick one at a time. So see, what did you do, Sister Bray? This is where it gets difficult for us. This is where it gets difficult for us. What do you do? If you're in a situation like that. See what 
Samuel did was even though I know he ain't got it all, but this is where I am right now, and I got to follow. Who else did this? Real close to this generation. Samuel would later do... Samuel would later talk to both of these guys. Why did David not kill wicked Saul? There it is. And church, that. That's it. Because the fact is, is so many times we look at, if I was Pastor Saul right now, you should be looking at me going, I know that dude's busting. But God did not put you there in the hardest time because I got some witnesses in this church right now that can come and testify today that I was in places that I knew that it was right, but God put me there for that moment. And I had to follow the order of God's authority whether I agreed with it or not. Can I get a witness now? Are you willing to do that? And then when you find yourself following the will of God, doing what God has already foreordained or God has... See, if we would just step back and let God do it, it'll work out. Watch. Samuel, thou servant hearest. I don't know what it is. Go and talk to the man of God. Man of God, what it is? Hey, next time you go, say, say, tell him, God, I'm hearing. And he did. Guess what? Eli goes away and Samuel becomes the greatest prophet. Didn't happen overnight. There had to be some enduring. There had to be some people that followed that he still had to follow. He still had to learn from Eli. He learned from Eli. And he probably learned more what not to do. So, David, Israel was going into destruction. They were spiraling out of control. And, but yet David was already anointed. God had already established what was going to happen. And not only did he establish that, he said, Hey, you know what, After I, I'm going to anoint this kid. And after that, my kingdom's going to be established through him. They just don't know it yet. So you just step back and everybody could have said... Oh, look, David, take it now. You know you're the man. I can't touch God's anointed. That, God didn't call me to do that. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. But in the process of waiting, God works it out. Saul would find himself in his own demise and would die in a manner that was not ordered by David. And guess what? David ascends to the kingdom and still honors him. And they say that before Solomon, even before Solomon, the kingdom expanded beyond what it ever saw. It was prosperous. It was at peace because every time somebody tried to hit them, they couldn't win. Why? Because he fought, the right man got in t- got, was now for the right moment, right time. Brother Bray. Mm-hmm. Come on now, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Think about it. Yeah. 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 And you know what? I, you know what, Eric? I bet. I bet. In his camp, I bet there were people like, man, Daniel, Saul, Saul going to get killed. And I, Brother Bray, I bet you David said, hey, we don't talk about the man of God. Come on. Because even he had enough sense. Because if you are following after God... You are going, God's not going to let you get destroyed. He might let you go through some stuff, but He's going to have you in mind. He's going to take care of it. Sometimes what we do is we forget about the authority of God and try to step into His role and execute judgment when it's not our place to. And that's why you've got board, board 
Y'all, no, all right, I'm going to be straight. That's why you got board, board brand churches who can fire and hire a pastor at any second. That's not God's order. I'm sorry. That's not God's order. I don't find that anywhere in Scripture. You, it takes a pastor. It takes a called pastor, a called leader. Many are called. Few are chosen. And listen, there's going to be a lot of people called. And some of those folks that are called or tried or even come from humble beginnings and find themselves in a different position later on in life, and they're not chosen because they chose the wrong route. Saul, you were head and shoulders above all your peers, but you messed it up, so I'm going to find somebody else. You were called just like David was, but I'm not choosing you. I'm choosing him. And the responsibility of people, see, this is bigger than us. But the responsibility of the people is, I'm going to follow whoever God allows to be there. Amen. 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 Brother Bray. Right. Well, what do they always say? You'll always outlive. You'll always outlive your leader because they got to move at some point. It, it, that's an army thing, you know. Just hang in there. So, they got to get transferred sometime. Yeah. You know, so I think it's up to the, you know, uh, I guess the more mature, uh, you know, followers or yeah. the followers. Well, you know, to make that clear. I love that point. Look, the, uh, David's, David's right hand man, like, let me have him, David. I mean, they're in private now. We ain't funny nobody. Look, David, all you got to do is wink, nod, I'll take Saul out for you. Even in private, he'll look at him and say, we don't touch God's anointing. This battle's really not mine. Man, that's great, y'all. I, I appreciate you put on that because that really helps us realize that ultimately God's got the control. Look, you think God, you think God is just gonna allow things to fall? And even if he did, it'll be, he'll allow things to happen to make a way. God allow things to turn stuff around or God will destroy it. Amen? Amen. So, I don't even know where to go back to. That was good stuff. In fact, it's true. And folks, um, God is... is we think God doesn't know how to handle his business sometimes. Well, I, God, forgive me. I'll, I'll be off there. God, forgive me. Sometimes I'm like, God, you, just let, me, let me do it my way. Let me figure it out my way. Let me handle it my way. Let me, hey, look, your way is not going to fix the problem. But if I'm, if I'm able to be obedient to the authority of God, then I... I can be able to live with peace and realize. But here's the fact. Something else that I'd learned. Brian, as your, as your father, um, you have to do what I say. You do. <laughs> and you don't like it. Believe me, I know. And, and, and here lately, y'all, I'm going to embarrass him, but here lately, you're 17 now. Yeah. I was 17 once. I remember them days. Every once in a while, he kind of feels like he can, he can kind of talk to me like a man. <laughs> so I have to remind him who's, who's the man of the house. Amen. Amen. You know, don't look down, son. <laughs> he, don't, he, don't, he don't try it often. Just like we don't try it often in the kingdom of God. And God remind you know, just like I have to remind him, God reminds us. And 
As long as he does it, if Haley comes and says, Brian, dad ain't here, we can do what we want now. Hey, guess what? When I come home and I'm looking to who was disobedient, whoever decided, it don't matter whether he liked it or not or disagreed, he's the one who's going to be okay. She's the one who's going to get punished. And if we are not obedient to God, when he comes back and he comes home as the father, he's going to look around and say, listen, I just want to know who was obedient. Yeah, but God, I was justified. No, were you obedient? What did Scripture say? What did, what did he say? Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right. Now, this is not going to be finished in one night. I, I'd already planned on splitting this up. So I'm just enjoying this conversation. I really think that this is very imperative uh, for the fact that if we don't recognize that God establishes his own delegated authority, God does that. Brother Bray, as a uh, NCO in, over your team and stuff, there are days where you have to take leave, you have to go. Somebody you have to delegate that authority to. All right? In the church setting, I got you. Don't go nowhere yet. Let me, let me make the point and then I got you. Um, in the church, when I have to work on Sundays, and I've made this clear to the church before, and I'm, I'll take this opportunity to do it again now. But when I am out, when I'm not here, um, the assistant pastor steps into the same spot. He has that same authority because it's been delegated. Like God delegated to me as the pastor. When I'm gone, I delegate that to him and it, so on and so forth or whatever ministry there's left. If there's a case where it's, a, it's, a, it's just how God's plan works. If you, if Brother, Brother Bray is uh, seeing one of you kids talking like you are right now, and he comes over here and says, you two need to quit talking so much during Bible study, and then y'all keep talking, and then I come back, I'm going to be like, you, I don't know this, I know this ain't realistic, Brother Bray. <laughs> but, and I'm like, then I have to say, listen, you have to follow what is said, because that is delegated. Amen? Does that make sense? Now, how did God delegate his authority? How did God do that? Well, let's look at Adam. Adam, he gave Adam the authority over all the land. Messed that up. Guess what? Kicked him out. <laughs> right? All right? God delegated his authority to Noah. Uh, Noah, I need you to preach. I need you to build for 100 years. If nobody listens, nobody follows you. Look, he could have had a massive church, but he didn't. He only had a few folks. And guess what God did? Those that followed Noah lived. Well, but nobody else is following. Those that followed Noah under delegated authority from God lived. Amen. Abraham, look, the seed, your seed is going to bless the whole world, both spiritually and physically. I'm delegating that to you. You've got to follow it. But even at times, he wasn't good at it either. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Joseph, I'm delegating authority. I'm going to put you in a place where that you're going to be second in charge and your whole family and whole people are going to come here and they're going to multiply beyond what the Egyptians even like. And guess what? They're going to enslave them and I'm still going to have to put somebody else in authority and lead to lead them out. Not so that everybody can say, look what Joseph did. Look what Moses did. Look what Noah did. Look what these people did. No. The reason why they have all the festivals and feasts and all the ceremonies was very simple. Look at what God did. And true leaders and leadership under God don't want the attention on them. Amen. Leaders don't want to say, I'm just, I'm just speaking candid, okay? Be very careful when somebody say, look how good I did. Because of me, all these people are living for God. Because of how I am or because of the things that I prophesy, because of all me and this and that, that's why all this is happening. Listen, we've got to be careful. Because Moses did a lot of stuff. 
but he always said it was God doing it. Hey, when he hit that, when he when he touched the water and it turned to blood, Moses didn't say I turned the water into, into blood. God turned that water into blood. He just used me. Amen. So we have to remember that, look, God, God knows what he's doing when it comes to putting who needs to be leading his people. Just like God can put people in that position, God can just as quickly take them out. Amen? You hear what I said, though? God. God. Listen, sometimes it may take a while, but eventually sin will find you and I will lose you. All right, Sister Bray. I almost forgot you, but then you wink, did your finger, so. But it's good. Go, come on, come on, come on. It's all right. <laughs> but, it's all right. Like how, I live with you. How David was with Saul. I'm just using I know, baby. You're good. Terms. Like, yo, I don't like what It's realistic. Crazy. You know, and I think the Lord just wants to stop here. Um, because here, here's the thing. There's something else I was thinking of as you were saying that. Because Samuel was able to know the voice of God, he was able to obey God when he knew what he was getting ready to tell Saul was not what he wanted to hear. Saul, why do I hear people? Why do I hear animals? And see, this is where we mess up. This is where we have the church uh, leaders of what the people want. Well, we we are gonna we're gonna use them as as sacrifices to you, God. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. But God's asking the question. Were you obedient to what I said? No matter how good your intentions are, were you obedient? And that's when he said obedience is greater 
than sacrifice. But I've given all the money. I've done all this for the church. I've done all that for the church. I should have a name. I should have this. I should be thought of as the greatest king on earth. But that, your sacrifice don't mean nothing to God. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean if it ain't obedience to God, then whatever you've done is not worth it. It don't mean nothing. Sister Bray. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. He loved him. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Listen, the fact is, and the fact is, is me as a pastor, look, I love Tony. Tony, I feel you're a. I think God has got some great things in store, but if you did something haywire, No matter how anointed you are or how called you are right now, if you get off path, it's my responsibility to be able to say and love you enough to say what you're doing is leading you the wrong direction. When Samuel had to watch Eli hear from God and not be obedient. Can you imagine... And see, listen, I love what you said earlier. I think one of y'all said it. Y'all won. Where it's like, I'm watching to know what not to do even. I think Samuel learned a lot when he learned from Eli of what not to do. And when it come his point, he was at a crossroad. I love Saul, but I love the Lord. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. You can serve man if you want to. You can do whatever you want. But as for me and my house, I'm following after God. And if you are called after, if God called you, you have a responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yes. Yeah. That's doing the sun, right? Boom. Think about it. Because look, you can go some places where it's like, listen, the guy we got in right now ain't it. You, this is your time to step up. Now is your time. We can make the thing. We can make it work. If it ain't the will of God, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Now's your time. Come on now. No, no. Why? He could. They said they were gonna take him by force. Look, he already had the crown. And they were going to take him by force. But he said, listen, let's go back to obedience. Listen, I can't do it this way. I've got to be obedient to death. You're trying to go ahead and put me on the throne. You're trying to go ahead and put me here. But i got to die first. You can do it the way God, man wants you to do it, and it's going to be premature, and it's not going to follow the will of God, and all destruction is going to happen because if he was sitting on the throne at that moment, his blood would not have been shed, salvation would not have been obtain, obtained, and we wouldn't be here right now saved. But he was obedient. He was the example of being obedient. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yeah. And I think that we gloss over how the severity of the sacrifice mm-hmm. that we made because we Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. You know when he became the high priest, when he took it back? The moment Caiaphas ripped his garment, that's when he took over. But until then, he was submitted to the high priest. Scripture said that if the high priest ever ripped his garment, he, he read, it, read it in the Old Testament, if the high priest ever ripped his garment, he no longer, he forfeits his role as the high priest. When he got mad when they said, who are you? And he said, I am. He ripped his garment and the real high priest stepped into play. That's why he was obedient. He was obedient because there was something. I can't step up into the throne because i got to be the high priest first. No, you feeding me, sis. You feeding me. I mean, that's it. So look, we can look at Jesus Christ himself and how can we say that I can't follow, I can't follow that. I can't. He did it. He said, follow me. My goodness, y'all. Tony, say something. You ain't said nothing yet. <laughs> well, hey. Come on now. Yeah. Come on, that's good. Amen. And I think that's very essential, especially, and I really believe that, and I really feel that. And, uh, and we've been talking about this before. How are we going to be able to maintain and keep these folks that are coming? They're coming, y'all. Amen. I see it. Is no, there's no when they're if if they are they're coming, and I think God is is ever allowed every one of us to face the things that we face, just like you said. To echo what you're saying is so that we can know how to be the church. Right. And that can mean different things. Maybe I live may not be fully developed, but maybe 
sins may not be fully uh, diminished. If you go through a lot of heartache, you know, it's, you know, like now in the womb, you see sins. Yes. To give birth to this ministry. Yes. You know, all the development was for the birth of this ministry. Yes. You know, and that and everybody had to go through everything that they went through. Y'all sitting here thinking while you're talking, my wife and I, I know she's thinking the same thing. Like, man, I wish I would have had this earlier. <laughs> There you go. That's why I can't argue at home and be like, hey, look, like, Pastor, this is doing this. Because I got a good pastor now. You know? That's why I'm like, ah, you're right, man. You know, like, I don't trust that either. Sister Bray's like, I ain't trying to be that transparent. Yeah. Yes. Back can. Wow, that's that. Think of wow. Sometimes God lets us go through some things because there's a real battle we got to fight. Amen. My goodness. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We're going to continue this on. Um, I, I just like how God can sometimes just take the Bible study over and we just do it in these directions. I mean. Um, and some of the things that we talked about tonight is very essential. Now, again, I can't, I can't go and leave this place without saying that, you know, um, as much as me and my wife have always, and it is very appreciative of the kind things that people say, especially with our leadership style. Some people don't, some folks on the outside may not agree with it, but they don't pastor y'all, I do. So, you know, and I, I, I bear that. But the thing is, is more so than anything, it's such a humbling feeling to know that who am I that God was mindful enough to trust me of all people. I'm busted and broken too. But he trusted us. And folks, as long as we continue to maintain a spirit of saying, hey, I, I don't need to forget who put me where I'm at today. The fact is, the reason why I'm here today is because when I was busted, he still picked me up and still forgave me and loved me enough that I'm here today because he didn't give up on me. The reason why you're here today is you endured some things. You went through some stuff. And you had some times that has, you thought was intended to kill you. But you're here. And you're stronger than ever 
because of what you went through. Sometimes that training, that, that incident, those things we go through only pre prepares us to be stronger for what is to come. There are going to be people that come here that were hurt too. There's going to be people that had to go through abuse too. There's going to be through pe there are people that went through traumatic things in their lives or sicknesses or all these stuff. And God allowed us, going back to a couple Wednesdays ago, allows us to use our current testimony even if it's the middle of it, the test is to break. That's going to get us through. That's going to get us through. You're essential to some, you're, if you will, we love to throw that word around a lot, essential workers. Y'all are essential workers for the kingdom of God. But it's tough. I know it's tough. But you're essential. I got to go through so much. I got to do all this thing. Lord have mercy military, police, first responders, some of us that have had to do some of these things, you know, when everybody else was at home, they said, we don't care if you get COVID, you still got to come to work. Because other people's lives are dependent on you. Come on, somebody. The church, you, ain't, you can't go home and hide. You're essential. Because somebody else's, your testimony, the situations you've been through, the walk and the calling that God put in your life, somebody else's life out there is dependent on it and they need you. Yeah. Amen. You got something? Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Yes. You know what? Even if his friends come to you that's more spiritual at the moment, tell you that, man, what you doing? He still had enough in God and trust in God to say, listen, yea, though he slayed me, I'm still trusting him, not what you got to say. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nobody else would have been able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I come on. That's even. I formed you in the womb for something that's going to happen down the road that nobody else can do. 
Tony, I formed you in the womb because you're going to have to do something that nobody else could do. Sister Bray, I, I formed you in the womb because you're going to have to face some stuff that nobody else could have made it through. But you did. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and that's when he got to the point where he's like, I'm tired of these people. I ain't preaching no more. I ain't talking about it no more. But then all of a sudden, he just bowled up in me. And, and my goodness, if I start really thinking about it, my, man, it's like fire shoved in my bones. I still got to keep telling them the truth anyways, even if nobody's going to believe me. Man, we, we, all, we way past, we still going. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I wanted to say, you know what? I'm not doing this ministry no more. I'm not going anymore. I'm not going to pray no more. I'm not going to. It was something inside me that wouldn't let me like give up. Yes. It was burning. Yeah. Was there the whole Come on now. Okay. So even though we're talking about, like our job, like my job, there's so many days I get that call. I'm like, I'm going to live all this. You know, I'm going to get it. Like, I'm going to get it. It's my job. It's my job. Woo! I tell every night of my job, no matter when we walk in the door, the pastor may literally have stepped up to the building. Come on. I'm like, guess what? We're going to be talking out. Yeah, because somebody's relying on that mail. Somebody's relying on that message. And if you didn't deliver the message, they would have never got it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see, Jet, Brother James, and you see Brother Eric, who, who wasn't a part of this at all, they had to do that. You know, God chose them to be, to go out to go that route. Yeah. They had to do it to make a minister somebody going through that. You know, I, I think I, when we talk about authentic, that's why your testimony is authentic. That's why your story yes. is authentic. Come on. But now they hear you and now they realize, let me rephrase that. Who doesn't think they're strong enough to go through that? Yeah. But now they hear you go through and they're like, wait a minute, I might have that in me too. Yes. And it's there. Yeah. And now they see it and now they can do it. Hey, if Chauncey and Tony's got the same Holy Ghost that I got, then I can make it. Come on. Amen. Woo. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we were just talking about it. Was it Sunday or something? You look. After he was Jesus was baptized, immediately he was took to the wilderness because he had to learn how to. Be, he had to learn how to be as hungry as man could possibly be. So. When he overcome the devil and started preaching, his his ministry didn't start till after that. But, but listen to this though: when he preached to the five thousand, mm -hmm. they were hungry. He knew because he'd been in the wilderness. He's, he, he's been there. So he knew they needed to eat right now. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He knew how to heal the broken hearted because his heart was broken. Yes. So he had been back in his home. Or how about this? When they said, look, we know who our father is. Who's your daddy, Jesus? Right. You know what they were saying. Yes. Right. Yes. Jesus, we heard, we know. Joseph ain't really your daddy. Who is he, really? Yeah. Oh, if you only knew who you was. <laughs> I love how Jesus would answer it. I'm telling you, my goodness. Starting back to one thing, obedience. You remain obedient through everything you go through. You keep the faith. Press toward the mark. 
when Paul got knocked upside the head with a stick and he got flocked and he was even shipwrecked and hungered and all that stuff and he said, who's weak? I'm not. And the cares of the church. He threw that in there. I was, a, I was pastoring too and everything else was going wrong in my life. But I ain't weak. Because I know I was obedient and God's given me a purpose. And if I didn't go through the shipwreck, I wouldn't have landed to for where the, where the uh, heathen was. And I wouldn't have getting, gotten bit by a viper. And I wouldn't have been able to shake it into the fire. And I wouldn't have been a great witness. And they started bowing down and worshiping me. And then I could tell them who to really worship. Sometimes you've been bitten. But it was just so somebody could see you get bitten. So that they can get a real answer when you just shook it off and said, Yea, though he slay me, I'm still trusting the Lord. I know that hurts, but I'm just going to trust God. I saw, I saw what happened to you. Tony, you're a great man. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't talk about me. Let me tell you who got me through it. And he won. Read it in the book of Acts. He won that whole island after getting shipwrecked and getting bit by a viper. Yeah. He's cursed. He's going to die. He's going to drop any minute. We've seen this before. He's going to fall any second. He ain't falling. Why is he not dead? Why is he, not, why is he still gathering wood? What's going on with this dude? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the enemy, the enemy will try to. He'll try to. Yeah, yeah. The enemy will try to attach himself to you, but you just got to shake it. Go over here. Now we just, now we just tag team y'all. Y'all, we, 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 a lot of folks got to go to work tomorrow, and I love this. I love this. I appreciate Bible, so I appreciate your response. We over here playing tennis and ping pong and everything else. And I tell you what, God is good to us. Y'all, be obedient in the worst moments of your life and the hardest times of your life. God has not forgotten where you're at. Amen. Scripture has proven to us, you, look at your neighbor and point at them, you have proven it to me. Because y'all all got a testimony. You've proven that to me. Amen. Can we just give him a hand clap? Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I might not look like what I've been through, but I'm going to tell you, God got me through it. That's why I'm here today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Sister Danielle, dismiss us in a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.